Hey, 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 guess what day it is? It's Thursday, and you know what that means? It's one more day till Friday. Yes, we love all days of the week, but you know, you know how I feel about Fridays. So, welcome to episode four of Lessons and Legacies. Um, for those of you who have been tuning in um, all week, you'll know that uh, we just began this show that was birthed from my brand new book. Um, my brand new book is Lessons We've Learned, Legacies of Life, and I am your host and author of the book, Melissa Price. Um, we have had a couple amazing guests this week so far. Monday, we launched with my good friend, Precious Pauling. Um, she came on and she read and we talked and um, kind of just talked about the show and the purpose of it and the book. And uh, Tuesday, I brought you guys a little bit of lessons in love. Wednesday, I had my friend, Dr. Deborah Dunstan on. That yeah, was yesterday. Um, and we did giveaways. She gave away a clear quartz uh, crystal pendant. She gave away one of her crystal bath bars. She gave away one of her books. And I gave away one of my books and greeting cards as well. So yesterday was like a really fun middle of the week show um, with prizes. You never know what you're going to get when you come here. So <laughs> uh, today I am here solo. And we are going to be going over lessons in resilience today. Uh, we talked about faith yesterday and, like I said, love. And, uh, you know, I, I do have other shows that I go on. And I have to say that a common theme for this time of year right now is, like, the stress and, you know, uh, A, because it's the holiday season. And so, you know, everybody's bank accounts are taking a hit one way or another, you know, my kids are young, so um, there's still Santa Claus involved in all that. So uh, yeah, there's that. And also, you know, pandemic is still going on. I know a lot of states have shut down and closed down again. I am currently in Charlotte, North Carolina. However, my whole family is in Detroit, Michigan. And they have been shut down. And I actually just got news um, two days ago. No, yesterday. I got news yesterday that my cousin, who's actually a couple years younger than me, um, has tested positive for COVID. She's the first one in our family that's gotten it. So um, she is saying she's fatigued. Um, her fever finally broke. She had three, four days of fever straight. and uh, but. She said it was a blessing kind of in disguise. She's looking forward to like chilling out at home and doing her due, you know, which I think brings us to what we're talking about today, resilience, you know, that both scenarios with the holidays, the stress, the money, the, uh, and, and, and then the pandemic. And then how are we going to do Christmas this year? Not being able to see everybody. Da, 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 da. There's a whole lot of resilience that is wrapped around in that. So um, I am going to go ahead and shout out today's episode to my cousin, Andrea Rose, um, because it's all about resilience. I am praying and hoping that once she's better, she will be a guest on the show because she wrote a brilliant, beautiful, beautiful, long gorgeous poem um, for the resilience chapter that I actually ended up making an illustration to go along with. It was, uh, the two are actually together in the book. I'll, I'll show you. I'll actually just show you before I start reading today, but I am going to save that for when she comes on. Um, and she is one of the most resilient people I know. And currently, like I said, trying to do the bounce back from COVID. Ugh. So prayers up to you, my cousin my best friend, my love. Um, I ask everybody that's watching today to please lift up my cousin Andrea Rose in prayer and hope that her recovery from COVID is speedy and quick and that she is through the worst of it. And uh, also lift up a prayer that she's going to come on and grace us with her presence. She said she would, but she's just not feeling it at the moment. So <clears throat> just before we move on, this is part of her poem in the book. It's a page and a half long. It's beautiful. 
And here is the picture. Many of you who follow me on Facebook probably have seen this already, but this is the illustration that was meant to go along with her poem called Returning. And that is out of the resilience chapter. Hey, precious. What's going on, sis? How are you? Thank you for joining. I appreciate you. I love you so very much. Thank you for the tags and for the love. We are doing resilience today. I just feel like I needed it, you know. Uh, I felt like I needed love in the beginning of the week because, you know, I was missing the fam and holidays. And then we talked with uh, Deborah yesterday on faith and going, you know, having the faith in those dark, crappy moments and being able to uh, just keep pushing on. And then today we're going with resilience because it's the bounce back, right? <laughs> you know, that's how we, we use our love and our faith to get us to the resilience, that strength we need to bounce back, right? So again, special shout out to my cousin, Andrea Rose, keep her in your prayers. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get into resilience. I have, um, what was I don't even remember what the heck I was going to read to you today. I had it all mapped up. Oh, yeah. Got to be honest. And, oh, there it is. Okay. I have two things in particular that I'm going to read to you guys today. Um, the first one actually is a song. I did not write it, but it's a song. And the other one is a piece that I wrote. And I hope that this brings you love and uh, motivation to help you find your resilience. And um, yeah, if you'd like to get your own copy of my book, Lessons We've Learned, Legacies of Life, you can find it at lessonsandlegacies.company.site. I'm popping it in there right now for you guys to see right on the bottom of the screen there, right below my face, you can see my website. Um, that's where you can find the book. There are many other fantastic books by fabulous authors, some of which who have already been on the show, Precious Pauling. Um, you can find greeting cards that I make myself. They're in two UPS stores currently and online, so I'm happy about that. And there are doTERRA essential oils, top of the line. I am a member there. I have been for many years. I do so much with essential oils. They're great for your immune system. They're great for your emotional well-being, your spiritual well-being. They help digestive issues, respiratory problems. There's so many wonderful things that essential oils can do. However, the ones that you get from the grocery store are not the ones you want to be putting on you. A lot of those contain like alcohol and fragrance and things that you should not really be putting on your body, so to speak, or ingesting by any way, shape or form. doTERRA oils are therapeutic, certified therapeutic, uh, pure therapeutic grade, and they are top of the line. They're the purest of the pure. And the beautiful thing about what you get on my store is that I am a member, so I get wholesale prices. And, you know, retail obviously is whew, ridiculous. Who wants to be spending the money when you could save? I have all the prices of the oils set just, just slightly above the wholesale, kind of just to really help me with the packaging. Honestly, I don't really even make any money off of it. But I feel like they are a benefit and a blessing to the world, so I want to share them with you. You can find the whole line there. Um, what else do we have? We have spirit squares, we have art, we have photography, we have all kinds of beautiful stuff. So check it out. The holidays are upon us. And like again, you can score yourself some holiday cards because we all know we're not going to be seeing everybody like we normally do this year. So um, yeah, so visit lessonsandlegacies.company.site for your book and maybe to do a little shopping. So yes, we are going to kick off Resilience. I'm going to read you the little intro of Resilience, and then I'm going to go into the song that I actually, if, if my book had a song, this would be it. I, I wrote this entire book to all of the music from this band, but this one song really defines why I wrote the book. And although I did not write the song, I must share. So... All right, resilience, you know, resilience is defined as bouncing back from a difficult situation, okay? Um, that could be bouncing back from COVID. That shows resilience, right? Um, bouncing back from taking care of your kids all night because they're sick. Resilience, getting up and going to work, 
when you don't feel like it. Resilience, you know, coming through a trauma such as molestation, domestic violence, abandonment, um, you know, things like that. Resilience, you know, making it through uh, a, a path on a spiritual journey. You know, the path to self-discovery, man, that requires resilience. Writing a book requires resilience. Starting a diet requires resilience. Going to the gym requires resilience. Why? Because you're sore. Oh my gosh, you can't walk the next day, but you got to find a way to get up and bounce back, right? Resilience is all about bouncing back. So... The little intro and shout out to my friend Steven Shingira who did all the trees. These are the trees that are at the beginning of each chapter. There's a different different tree for each chapter. He does beautiful digital art. So thank you, Shing Steven Shingira. Uh, it says resilience only through heartache, pain, loss, and desperation can we truly embrace the rainbows in our lives. There are successes in the messes and blessings in the lessons. We are resilient by nature and born to survive. Apart or together, we can overcome and rise. Amen and amen again, as my friend Bill Brown says. <laughs> so resilience, yes, all about the bounce back. So I'm going to read you next. This is a song. I feel like maybe I should put it in the background, but I'm not going to because it's got lyrics and I feel like it might muddy up what I'm saying. So what I will do is when I get off, I'll actually drop the YouTube link to the song in the comments below. And I highly encourage you guys to not only look up the song and listen to the words and enjoy the music and the singing and everything because it's beautiful, but seriously, if you're able to view the video, boy, does that say it all. Boy, does that say it all. It's a fabulous, fabulous video, and I highly recommend it. So if you really want to catch a taste for why I wrote this book and what it's supposed to do, check that video out and check out the song. So, all right, here we go. Precious, what are you doing, by the way? I feel like engaging. I feel like conversing at the moment. <laughs> if you're free and you want to pop on, just say so. I'll bring you in. I'll send you a link. <laughs> All right, so this song is called Everyday Life, and it's by the band Coldplay. Coldplay has been one of my favorite bands since I think I was probably in eighth grade when I started listening to them. And I have i don't even know how many albums they have anymore, but I'm pretty sure I know every word to every song they've ever written. And I am the biggest fan, but they like only tour in other countries and the West Coast. And I am all the way on the Atlantic. And so that doesn't work for me. Um, Unless I was rich. I mean, if y'all want to buy buy up some books, man, buy up some books and get me to Coldplay one of these days, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> so the song, okay, I have to tell you, the video, it represents all cultures, all ages. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's powerful. Check it out. I will put it in the comments, but if you don't get to stay till the end or don't revisit it, that's fine. Go look it up yourself. Everyday Life by Coldplay. It says, what in the world are we going to do? Look at what everybody is going through. What kind of world do you want it to be? Am I the future or the history? I'm sorry to pause this. I got to put my glasses on. I can't see. Because <laughs> everyone hurts and everyone cries. Everyone tells each other all kinds of lies. Everyone falls Everybody dreams and doubts, but you got to keep dancing when the lights go out. Keep walking in those dark moments, right? How in the world am I going to see you as my brother and not my enemy? Talking about all these politics and these things in the world, you know? Because everyone hurts, everyone cries, everyone sees the color in each other's eyes. Everyone loves, everyone gets their hearts ripped out. Gotta keep dancing when the lights go out. Hold tight for everyday life. 
And then it ends, and this goes on. I'm not gonna like repeat the chorus and stuff to you. And then it ends saying, at first light, I throw my arms open wide and say, Alleluia. So it's a really, really beautiful song. I, it's, you know, it's quick. It's one page. I could, like I said, keep repeat, repeating the uh, choruses and stuff to you, but you don't need the repeat. You get the gist. So the point of this book, much like the point of this song is to show how very much we are all alike by what we go through, how we hurt, how we cry, how we laugh, how we love, how we live, how we bounce back. You know, the five chapters of my book are love, faith, laughter, resilience, and success. All of those words take many forms. They have many faces and we all have experienced them, you know? And to see it in that video visually is so beautiful. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful representation of the song. And for me, that's kind of what I wanted to do with this book was to take everybody's stories and poems and testimonies and um, art and show that through these five areas, oh my gosh, we are connected. We're connected more than we could ever even fathom, I think, sometimes. And uh, my hope for the show is to kind of do the same thing that that music video did and give you a visual representation. I'm bringing children to you. I am bringing black and white and, and British and Asian cultures to you, all cultures to you. I am bringing men, women, and kids. I am bringing young ages and old ages. I'm bringing single parents. I'm bringing dual double working parents. I am bringing rich people, poor people, all of this to you. I feel like seeing is believing. And for me to give you the visual on top of the book, on top of the words and on top of my voice, I want you to see these people. I want you to hear their stories in hopes that you feel it and you feel connected to them too and understand that your story matters. Each and every stinking thing you've gone through in your life matters. It's so important to share it. Why? Because these are your lessons you've learned. And this is what you leave behind. What do we do? What does science do? What do, what do parents do? When you touch that stove and you learn that that shit is hot, you darn sure tell your kids don't touch it. It's hot. You tell everybody don't touch the stove when it's hot, right? What happens if you keep that information to yourself? Think about it. What happens if you keep the hot stove information to yourself? Other people get burned. Other people suffer. So when you are sitting on that story about when daddy used to beat you up when you were a baby for no reason because he drank too much, guess what? There's people like me and other people. I'm not saying it was my daddy, but yes, I did go through that. Uh, and other forms of abuse in my life. But if you've gone through abuse or something like that, why not share it? Because if you can't share how you made it through, obviously you made it if you're there to share, right? Share what got you through. It could have been a book. It could have been a coach. It could have been, it could have been a song. It could have been a place to escape. It could have been meditation. It could have been going and getting on medication or, or calling somebody to help you, you know, but you got to share that with other people because other people are suffering in silence. Like my friend precious says, and they don't know what to do. And they're sitting, they're sitting on their story. You can share and make a difference in the world by saving other people from getting burned. So share your story. This is a perfect platform for you to do so. If you're watching now and you're interested in being a guest, I have had guests on the show that have written for my book before and, and, and well, who are in the book and have contributed. However, you don't need to be part of this. You are part of it already. You don't need to be printed on these pages to be on this show and share your story. So I'm asking you if you would like to share a poem, a song, a testimony, a story. It doesn't even have to be written by you. It could be something that touched you in a way and, and changed your path. It could be a story your grandmother told you about her life. 
It could be anything. It could be a painting that you did when you're going through a tough time and let's talk about it. You know, it doesn't, and it doesn't have to be tough stuff either. The chapters are love, faith, laughter, resilience, and success. You know, yes, all of those have tough things in them, but they also got a lot of beauty in them too. So if you want to get on and just put your face out there, put your story out there, be heard, be seen, and do the darn thing. Share your story so that it makes a difference in somebody else's world. All you got to do is email me. You can look me up on Facebook, Melissa Price. Again, that's my name. Just look up Melissa Price. Otherwise, if you'd like to contact me, I'll put that on the screen below. Just look right down there. You can see contact me at lessonsandlegacies at gmail.com. Okay. So now that I've gone off on my tangents, we are going to go into the final piece that I'm going to read for, for you today. And this is an original. And this is probably, honestly, let me just flip through here real quick. My mom's got a lot of great stuff in this chapter too. But I have to say, ugh, I have, gosh, this, this chapter probably has the greatest amount, excuse me, of favorite pieces of mine in there. I love the resilience chapter. Um, but this is probably one of the favorite pieces that I have written. And I love my cousin's piece too. I really hope she gets to come on here when she's feeling better because I would like to hear her read it. I've actually never heard her read it. She wrote it. She sent it. I've read it many times and it gets me every time. Just, oh, that's so powerful. And I will invite you too, as I read this, because she's a very, very visual writer. Um, I would highly recommend that maybe you try to use this as like a little brief. Oh, I'm not even reading that one. Gosh, I want to so bad though. Well, when she reads it, I will invite you to close your eyes and take the visual on with it because boy, does it, it takes you on a journey and it paints a beautiful picture. So I feel so inspired to read it. Maybe I will. I'm going to read it. I know I said I wasn't going to, but I'm going to read it because I'm thinking about her and she will be on and that could be next week or the week after or whatever. But you guys can hear me read it and then you can hear her read it. And I imagine that it's going to sound totally different coming from the writer. You know, she wrote it from her place in her space and I received it the way I did. And so I read it the way I do, but she may read it differently. So or maybe I'll pull a fast one on her and have her read that and then have her read one of mine too. So you guys get a bonus one. I, I don't know. I don't know what I want to read to you guys. I think I want to, I'm going to do my cousins and I might do the one I planned for you, for me. So, all right. This is lessons in resilience. Okay. All about the bounce back. This is indeed the one that goes with the picture. It's called returning and not returning like as in one word, R-E, capital R-E, dash, turning, like you're turning again, okay? <clears throat> returning by Andrea Rose. Life moves in cycles. It's irrefutable and it's everywhere. The cycle of breath, pause, inhale, Pause, exhale, repeat. The cycles of the sky, sun by day and moon by month. The cycle of the year, winter's rest and conception, spring's rebirth and play, summer's fullness and fire, and autumn's transformational death. The cycles within the body, male moved by the sun, female moved by the moon. The cycles of human life mirrored by nature, as above, so below, as within, so without. Ups, downs, ups, downs, turn, turn, turning the wheel. Lessons learned and unlearned, then repeated and again. These cycles all allow for mistakes, for non-linear growth, for revisiting from a different space. They allow for forgiveness, a roadmap to wholeness as patterns emerge. 
Although circular vision is innate, it is not embraced in today's world. Instead, we are taught to see in straight lines, to race to the finish, to meet those benchmarks, to draw comparisons and contrasts, and to just box ourselves in. We ignore and numb our current pain, hoping for some future point when things might feel better. When our vision denies the expansive cyclical in favor of the constricted linear, we inevitably disconnect. We doubt ourselves and place blame, compare ourselves and don't measure up. We look for ways to escape who we are or perhaps don't know how to acknowledge that where we are matters. With narrowed tunnel vision, we are always waiting for a light at the end. The hamster wheel is the only wheel, monotonous, endless, and punishing. Forgetting how to listen within, we seek meaning from all the things without. We cut ourselves, we starve ourselves, take pills to unbecome ourselves. We drink, we smoke, we hide, and we mask. We put up walls because walls have been put up around us. Like caged animals, our natural instincts dismissed, we forget how to be fully alive. Now is the time to remember. It is time to recl reclaim the universe inside, that beautiful turning wheel with all its ups and downs, that release in knowing there is no clear beginning and no definite end. It's all a journey of reliving. Every day, a new chance to circle back. Each repetition, a chance to see freshly, to relearn who we are, to fall in love with nature. There is power in cyclical awareness, the power to embrace those ups and downs, knowing things won't always feel good or look perfect, but eventually they will again. That seesaw back and forth, the rolling and receding of that tide, the birth, the death, the pause, and the lessons along the way. To be strong in this life, to be balanced, to be flexible, to be free, we all must become spiders spinning meaning into every thread. Thank you so much, my beautiful, beautiful cousin, Andrea Rose. Boy, oh boy. That is a gorgeous poem around resilience. Absolutely. And again, that picture just kind of reminds me of all the seasons we have to go through, all the elements all the ups and downs, all those quiet, dark moments and the cold of the winter and the pressure of the, the heat in the summer and all the irritations and, and, and stuff that come with the springtime that ugh, allergies and wet and muck and, and then there's fall. Fall's my favorite season. I don't really have anything bad to say about that. So, <laughs> but I'm saying each season has their, thing that you're supposed to go through, even in weather, but even in our lives, each season you, you're in, there's something we have to endure, something we need. And because we endure it, we bounce back, you know, something we have to be resilient through. And we are born resilient. We were born with basic instincts, you know, um, born to survive, just like the intro says. Um, my cousin paints a very, very beautiful picture in all the ways possible about how resilience is just kind of painted and mapped into our lives. You know, it's it's kind of innate in us. It's there. We were born to survive, right? Fight or flight. We all have those instincts. So let's see, we're at 29 minutes. If you guys are all right with like hanging in with me for another, I don't know five or 10 minutes. I'll read you one more piece out of resilience and then I will uh, let you go for the day. And I hope that some of this is helping you find your bounce back. Uh, all right. So this one is a story about my life. 
This is kind of what I go through on a regular basis. And I feel like most parents will definitely appreciate it, whether you're a daddy or a mommy, whether you're single or married, anybody who's had kids in their lives or whether you've adopted, it doesn't matter. If you're a grandparent taking care of your grandkids, I mean, if you've got kids in your world in any way and you live a life where you have to wake up and do things, uh, yeah, this one's for you. <laughs> Um, and I really do. I hope y'all are having a, a blessed week and that this gives you the bounce back and push back and power that you need to get you through to Friday because Friday, Friday's a fun day, right? All right. This one I've read before, not on the show, Cheers to Lessons and Legacies, um, but I have read it on my site before or my, my Facebook page and uh, before this became an official show. So um, some of you may have heard this, but if you have, enjoy again. And if you haven't, enjoy for the first time. All right. This is called I Gotta Be Honest. I gotta be honest. There are days that I just don't want to get up. Is it because my bed is so warm and cozy? Is it because I revel in the peaceful silence of a household still asleep? Is it knowing that just outside the bedroom door, the children await their breakfast and the bills need to be paid? A mountain of laundry needs to be done too. Some days it's all of it, and some days I can't tell if it's any of it. The sound of a Disney cartoon abruptly wakes me from my short-lived yet thoroughly enjoyed slumber. It's time to start the day. I roll over and snuggle with the family dog who's kept close watch over me through the night. We exchange a glance and sigh before reluctantly rolling out of bed. As soon as the toothpaste hits my brush, I begin counting out my tasks for the day. One, make breakfast while doing laundry. Two, have the brush your teeth and get dressed battle with the kids. Three, repeatedly ask the kids to make their bed. Four, go ahead and make their beds since they failed to hear me. Five, write out the school lessons for the day. Six, walk the dog while contemplating dinner. Seven, make the kids a snack and then begin school. Eight, breathe. Just for a second. Nine, more lessons. Check, discuss, review assignments. 10, make lunch. 11, ding, 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 ding. Time to rinse those teeth. I gotta be honest, guys. Crawling back underneath my comforter sounds pretty tempting right now. I push forward anyways, checking things off my list one by one. And just like clockwork, I quickly find myself at lunchtime. Peanut butter and jelly for one child, ham, cheese, and mustard for the other. Exhausted from the mere half day that's passed, I prepared two different meals to appease my little ones. I want one of two things right now, a nap or some personal time to myself. I know I should probably stop and eat with them, but this is an opportunity to escape for just a few quiet moments. While they, content or they contently explore the array of food on their plates, I begin inching my way toward my bedroom as silently as a mouse when... Beep! What was that? As I fold the laundry and watch the children finish lunch, my eyelids begin to feel heavy along with my heart. The surge of relief that accompanies the sweet thought of a restful moment, coupled with the brutal sounding of the laundry alarm, can be quite the letdown if it happens enough. And for me, good Lord, that's almost every day. <laughs> I do multiple loads of laundry a day. It's sick how much laundry we go through. Not me, it's the husband and the children. 
my husband's got a messy job and kids are messy. So, I mean, it happens. I understand. But Lord almighty, if I could get, get rid of the laundry. Precious, I'm still waiting for you to come over and do my laundry. You said you were going to be my laundry guru. Hey, Dr. Deb, how are you? You like those earrings? They were a re-gift from my sister. Well, my mom gave them to me. We got in trouble for that one. Certain people don't like re-gifting. <laughs> Go ahead and make those beds. All right. I'm sorry I got distracted. I was so excited to see y'all in here. Thank you for coming on. And Deb, uh, check your messages if you didn't already. Let me know if I can come and drop off your grand prize gift basket tomorrow. I have it all ready and I'd love to swing by with the kids. We don't have to come in or stay or anything, but I'd like to like hand it off to you in person. So check your messages and let me know. All right. Back to, back to the thing. Sorry. Laundry. Laundry. Yes. All right. Here we go. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's big. Okay. Let me just reread this paragraph. I apologize. I got to get better at staying focused. The feelings come over me, you know? All right, so as I fold the laundry and watch the children finish lunch, my eyelids begin to feel heavy along with my heart. Y'all have been there. The surge of relief that accompanies the sweet thought of a restful moment, coupled with the brutal sounding of the laundry alarm, can be quite the letdown if it happens enough. It's basically a recipe for disaster when it comes to the human spirit. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I will ever figure this out. There has to be a way to take care of everything and still find just a few minutes for myself in the day. I'm usually so organized and efficient at managing time. I got to be honest. I don't think I'm doing a very good job at it right now. If I was, I don't think I would miss my bed so much. Fully loaded and refueled, the kids proceed to show me all of the new acrobatics they learned today, along with the pillow fort that they made in the bedroom. It was a great fort, really. It consisted of all the pillows and cushions that they could find, and of course, every clean blanket and towel in the house. I applauded them for the great teamwork and muscle that they used to make it happen. If only they would use that same amount of skill when it came time to doing homework and chores, yeah. I step outside for a moment to clear my head, fully knowing that I was going to have to help clean it up if I wanted the job done right. And once that job is finished, it is full steam ahead into planning dinner for the family. I got to be honest. I really, really miss my bed. Tonight, we're having street tacos. It's the family favorite. It requires the tiniest flour tortillas that anyone can conceive of. Since the shells are the same size as my little one's hands, they insist on making their own. So now it's time to do some math. Let me get this right. I need to fit the tiny shells, meat, cheese, lettuce, salsa, sour cream, avocados, rice, and a side of fruit all in one plate just so you can make it. <sighs> As I visualize all of these ingredients making their way to the beige carpet below the dinner table, I asked the children, can I please just make the tacos for you? But their answer was quite simple. No. 13 spoons, four forks, and four plates later, I continued on to scrub the remaining pots and pans from our meal, thankfully, with the help of my husband. Afterwards, I make a quick pass under the dinner table with the carpet cleaner while he vacuums the stray toppings that did indeed make their way to the floor. The kids have caught their third wind of the day as they begin doing cartwheels and somersaults all through the house. You're going to get sick, I say, as they promptly ask for dessert. I got to be honest. Sometimes I give in. After dishing out the Oreos and milk, I slip outside once more, and it's already dark. Where did my day go? This was before the I Hire Me Challenge, Precious. Where did my day go? What did I actually do today? Everything and nothing is what I usually tell myself. 
I take a long, deep breath. And by the time I get to a next breath, mommy duty calls as I hear the children start to argue over who is going to shower first. Heading back inside, I think to myself, damn it, I should be showering first. Six towels and all the hot water later. I guess I'll be showering tomorrow. It's time to end the night and tuck the kids in bed. So we all say our prayers and give the dog his proper pets. We kiss and hug and exchange I love yous. After a moment, I go back in one last time to say goodnight and crack their doors open and turn on the hallway light. And as they drift away, all become still. And I still wonder what I can do to get my fill. It's dark, it's late, and I am completely spent. I could read a book, watch a show, maybe paint my nails or call a friend event. I gotta be honest. I just want my bed. So I change my clothes, I brush my teeth, plug in my phone and fluff the sheets, make the final rounds before I retreat and see everyone sleeping so peaceful and sweet. I take a deep breath and close my eyes, getting ready for the next repetitive sunrise. Though my body is tired and so is my mind, my spirit is full of a love that is divine. Instead of giving up, resilience now, come on. Instead of giving up, I give in to my source, fully knowing each time he'll put things right back on course. His blessings are abundant and they surround me every day. I see them in my husband's smile and I see them when my children's play, my children's play. I feel them when we laugh and cry and even when we're sick. So learning how to trust him, well, that's the greatest trick. I say my prayers and I dim the lights, then crawl in bed and curl up tight. Another blessing. I got to be honest, guys. It's always worth the fight. Yes. Yes, it is always worth the fight. You know, resilience. What is it? What is it, guys? It's the bounce back. It's the ability to bounce back. The definition says the ability to bounce back from tough or difficult or painful situations. We've all been there, right? We are all human. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. I apologize. Um, yeah, the bounce back. So that, to me, that I got to be honest story from my book is every day of my life. That's what, well, it's, it's gotten better actually, since I did the I hire me challenge, which you guys learned about on Monday when I had precious with me, but, uh, I learned how to do better at managing my time and my space and my gifts. And it was a bounce back, you know? So I highly encourage you to reflect on your resilience where have you been resilient already, for one? Because Lord Almighty, it is sometimes just getting out of bed. So, I mean, if you are 30 years old, 40 years old, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, and you're watching this, you guys have to have a slew of resilient moments in your life. If you want to share them, again, please reach out to me. I would love to have you on the show. Even if you don't want to come on, you can always like email me the story, your testimony or whatever, and I'll read it on your behalf. If you're camera shy, you know, you don't actually have to come on to be part of the show and be recognized. So if you would like to have your story and your lessons um, become legacies, put them out there, share them with more than just yourself, share them here. This is lessons and legacies. Everything you've gone through is what you leave behind for other people to learn from. So please, I'm going to ask you if you would like to be part of the show or reach out to me, contact me in any way. Um, please uh, check out the link right below. Um, contact me at lessonsandlegacies at gmail.com. 
And uh, yeah, there's that. And um, what else? What else do I have for you guys? If you'd like to be a guest, contact me. If you'd like to purchase a copy of the book for yourself or someone you love, please visit lessonsandlegacies.company.site. And um, yeah, today was all about resilience. Tomorrow, I have a special treat for you. We have two very, very special guests coming on. My brilliant, beautiful, lovely daughters, Charlotte, who she likes to be called Charlie. So you may see Charlie on the screen. She's Charlotte, but Charlie for short and Sophie Price. They are going to be stream yarding in. I just taught them how to do this the other day um, from their room. And they're going to be talking about their business, first of all, that they created, which again was a byproduct of the book. Um, and they're going to be talking about this book and what the journey was like for them. They also have contributed art quotes. They've read a lot of this. They've helped me um, share a lot of this over the last several months. And since the book, uh, both my store, lessonsandlegacies.company.site, was born. But the kids are brilliant in what they do. And they needed a store for their original designs as well. And their store is teastotesandnotes.company.site. Again, they are our special guests this Friday at 2 o'clock. So please stay tuned. Show up. Show your love. Show your support. Not just for me as an entrepreneur, but for my kidpreneurs. You know, we took this pandemic and we made it work. We found new ways, new doors of opportunity. And I am very, very grateful for that part of the pandemic because I, through this, was able to show my kids that even when the world shut down, there's a way. There is always a way. You just got to be creative, think outside that box and move on it. Be resilient. Whatever life throws at you, whatever curveball you get, no matter what it is, even if it's a pandemic, you can find a way. Find your bounce back. So that was the main message for today. Again, this is Melissa Price with Lessons and Legacies. You've listened to episode four. Thank you very, very much for joining in. Please like, please share, please comment. I will let you guys know you can look up Lessons and Legacies on YouTube. And all of the episodes are in line in there. There's also a bunch of Spirit Square videos below that that you can see some of the artwork and furniture that I do with epoxy and woodworking and crystals and nature and all that great stuff. So uh, please check out Lessons and Legacies on YouTube for these live videos and much more. And then just check me out on Facebook, Melissa Price. You know this face. Find it. Like it share it, share the video. And uh, I hope to see you guys back tomorrow for the lessons and legacies that you've learned. That's the topic for tomorrow. So thank you guys very much for joining in again. I love you tons. Let's check these comments. Hey, Bill. Hey, Brenda. I love you guys. I don't know. Well, I don't know how much you got to check, but I, I hope that uh, if you didn't see the whole thing, please catch the beginning, share like love. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well and that everybody's staying safe and healthy. I said, I've got some, uh, unfortunate family news yesterday that I've got a cousin that came down with the virus, the Rona. Um, she's, she's all right. She's pretty healthy. She's very, very healthy actually. Um, and actually Bill, you've met her, you met Andrea. But uh, yeah, so anybody that's popping on right now, if you don't mind, please lift up my cousin Andrea Rose in your prayers this evening. Pray that it's a speedy recovery and that the fever and pain goes away. She did say her fever broke this morning. So today's episode was actually dedicated to her. Again, she is my resilience girl. Um, what I read earlier, I hadn't even planned on reading, but I just couldn't get her off my heart and out of my mind. So I know Dr. Deborah, we've talked about her and whatnot too. So lift her up, please. I don't, I don't ask for too much too often. So I just ask, keep my family in your prayers. Keep my, my cousin Andrea in your prayers. And uh, she is resilient by nature and born to survive apart or together. I know she's going to overcome and rise. How about you? How about you? You guys were born for it. So no matter what's going on in your world, Remember, you got the bounce back in you. All you got to do is find it, you know, find it. It could be a phone call. It could be a thing that you read, something you listen to. 
something you eat. You know, it's different for all of us, but find it. The only way you fail in life is if you give up. So find your resilience and uh, remember your lessons are what you leave behind. And that is what becomes your legacies. Share with the world and save other people from getting burned. Reach out to me at lessonsandlegacies at gmail.com or Melissa Price on Facebook. Love to have your story, your testimony on the show or have you join in on person. I love you guys and have a blessed Thursday. We'll see you at two o'clock tomorrow. And uh, 